Well, good morning and welcome to the first of our Praying Together, which I hope is going to be something that we're going to be able to do during this crisis, to be able to share worship and praise and our prayers and reflections with each other. I'm joined this morning um, by my husband, Mark, because of course we can't um, actually have anybody else, no more than two people together, and also by the cat. So if you do hear a meow here and there, during the course of our um, reflections and prayers, then it is the cat and not Mark. You may be able to recognise where I am. I'm actually at St Michael's and All Angels Church in Llandigno Junction. It's a place where people have been coming to worship, of course, for decades, but not at the moment, because this church, like all our churches, is closed. It is a place of great beauty. It's where people have come together and admired this lovely church building. But it's not church. We are church, the people of God. And so we're trying to keep in touch with each other and share in different ways worship and prayer until we can gather once more in our beautiful church buildings. We're going to spend a few moments just stilling ourselves as we listen to a track from Keith Duke, who may be familiar with his music. This particular track is called, You Lord Are In This Place. And we remember when we listen to this, that we know that no matter where we are, whether it's in a church building, or not. God is there, waiting for us, wanting to meet with us. We're going to turn to our Lord, to our merciful Lord with our confession. And the response to Father, forgive us, is for we are truly sorry. Father, forgive us, for we are truly sorry. Loving Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you, for ignoring your will and following our own. Father, forgive us, for we are truly sorry. For behaving just as we wish, ignoring the ways you have taught us. Father, forgive us, for we are truly sorry. Our Gospel reading this morning is from St. John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. 
When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks by night that they stumble, for they have no light. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So when he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, for that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is come into the world. After this, she said, um, went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he have opened the eyes of the blind man, have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odour, for he has been here for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you have sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, 
believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. At this time it's quite difficult, isn't it, to recognise exactly where God is at the moment, where God can be found. So I just ask you to take a few moments to think about where God is working right now. Get up and have a look out of your windows. What can you see? You might be able to see beautiful trees, the beautiful spring flowers. You might be able to see houses. Well, God is working in all of creation and in all of our lives. God is working in our hospitals, in our communities. He's working with those who are trying to ensure that we are safe and that we have the care we need. He's working in those who have been isolating themselves. He's working in those who are in our shops, in our supermarkets, those who are working for the emergency services, those who are working on a vaccine for a cure for this awful virus. God is at work in our hearts, in our homes, in our strength, and in our resilience. He will never leave us. He knows our pain, he knows our fear and anxiety, and he has compassion. As illustrated in the telling of the raising of Lazarus, the Lord Jesus had feelings too. He wept at the death of his friend. He understands suffering. He suffered for us. And he wants us to turn to us in our distress, in our anxiety, in our fear, to turn to him who is the light of the world so that he may shine his light into our lives and we may know that he will never leave, never leave us alone. Let us pray. Lord, draw us near and keep us all under the shadow of your wing under the shadow of your mercy. Lord, draw near to us. Lord, sustain and support those who are sick, bereaved, anxious or lonely. Draw them to your grace and love. Lord, draw us near. Lord, strengthen and energise all those who are working in exceptional, difficult and dangerous situations those who are travelling to laboratories working on a vaccine, all our medical personnel in hospitals and the community, those working in the emergency services, delivery drivers, shop workers, teachers, postmen, we lift them to you. We are so grateful for them. Lord, draw them near. We pray for the church worldwide and for our Bishop Gregory, for all who minister and serve in our diocese, all our brothers and sisters. May the Holy Spirit lead all and give us words of comfort and hope through Jesus Christ. Lord, draw us near. Lord, lead us to draw nearer to you, knowing that nothing can separate us from the love you have for us each and every one of us. Lord, we give thanks for your blessings, for everything that confirms your care, for everything that imparts your peace and brings us joy, for everything you are, we praise and give you thanks. Amen. And so, until we can meet again, keep well, Keep safe. May the Lord bless and keep you and those you love this day and all.